Hey guys, it's Carl. So we're in Victoria right now. Honestly, it's a bit of a rainy day, typical West Coast, but behind me, we've got something super special. So we're here with Audi test driving the RS e-tron GT. I'm in the market for a premium EV vehicle. I think this is one of the best specs that you can get. Premium sedan has a bit of usability. I think you guys know uh, what I'm coming from, a GT3. Link does not fit in the car. This has rear seats. It's usable, obviously going towards that EV space. And um, here we go. So we started off the day or the experience off with a hike to learn about Audi's commitment to sustainability and being here in Victoria, it's a beautiful setting for that. Like I said, it's a bit wet, a bit rainy, but uh, that's the West Coast for you. I'm a big fan of Audis in general, and this is actually built on the same platform as the Taycan, which I've driven before. And coming from a GT3, it's a different car, different kind of speed. This is the instantaneous torque that I think everyone loves from EVs. It's essentially just a big rocket ship. And it's 637 horsepower, 612 pound-feet of torque, and that's uh, during launch control, which we'll do a couple launches here on the wet track. And I'm gonna walk you around this exact spec of this car. It's an Ascari blue, and it's kind of fitting for a bit of the rain, a bit of the wetness. Blue on blue, let's take a look. We've got the front end, so this is one of the best specs of uh, this car right here. It's the Matrix LED headlights. I feel like Audi does their headlights like some of the best in the industry. They're super mean, they're super aggressive. You've got some of the intakes all on this side. These are actually real, they're usable. So this front end, nice and aggressive. And of course, uh, the Audi badging and kind of coming around the wheels, which I've always been a fan of Audi wheels. Once again, they don't really miss on these. So these are 21 inches, non-staggered. You've got the same sizes on the front and back. We've got some glossy carbon fiber on the side mirrors. You can also spec the roof with carbon fiber. This has a moonroof, which lets a lot of more natural light in. We've got some more gloss carbon fiber on the door sills. And since this is technically an Audi driving experience, you've got some stickers that will not be on your vehicle. But uh, since we're on a track day, obviously each car has these on it. Around the side panel, four doors. So that's a huge reason why I'm in love with this EV. You have actual usable space. We can get Link in the back. We'll do a little size test. And coming to the back, and if we just kind of lower this and look at that, that is a very mean and aggressive looking back end. This is once again, one of my favorite parts uh, of this car. So you can kind of see how the roof line kind of slopes down, kind of reminds me a bit of a, a sport back. And of course, you have all that great branding. So once again, RS badge on that side, and uh, this being the e-tron GT. We've got uh, the two charging ports on either side. So slot one and slot two on the driver's side. And funnily enough, if any of you uh, have been watching the David Beckham documentary, we've got uh, number 23. So shout outs to DB, David Becks. And me being a relatively tall dude, just over uh, six feet, there's a decent amount of space and some headroom still. I've got room in the knees. Once again, most of the stuff here, uh, Link, my doggo, camera gear would be in the back. But uh, if you want four people, if you need that option, uh, my GT3 can't even uh, hold anyone in the back. So once again, just a lot more functionality, usability is um, something I'm really looking for. And I think something that uh, a lot of people are looking for in a EV. Perfect segue from the rear to the interior. And this is maybe my favorite part of the car. This is what a real car, I think, looks like. Um, when you see new EVs now, they're just overdone with screens. We've got a 16 inch, 17 inch screen. We've got the, the micro suede interior that's uh, you know sometimes a white, really light material. It looks good in theory, but it just doesn't wear well. So in this cockpit, we've got a 10.1 inch screen. We have tactile buttons, like believe it or not, for some of the best ones like Drive Select, which is the one that you're gonna be picking when we're on track, we're obviously gonna go to dynamic or maybe in individual mode, traction control. That's a clicky hard button, which is so nice. Yes, we've got some piano black, which uh, collects some fingerprints I can live with. And the rest of the car where it needs to be, it's wrapped in leather. The door was open, you can tell it's pouring rain. If this was a micro suede, it would not be a pretty sight. The seat's super comfy. You can get them in different color options. The seat hugs you, which is great. Steering wheel, great position. I can actually control the air vents. Once again, Tycon, I am looking at you. We've got some matte carbon fiber. Interesting because the outside is, um, it's gloss, so we've got a bit of a two-tone carbon fiber look, but I think it looks really smart, really clean. And once again, it just 
makes me feel like an actual car. It's not too futuristic. It doesn't look dated in any way. It's just done right. And I think Audi just deserves some huge props for that. And once again, not overdoing it with the massive, you know, iPad Pro display size as screens, just everywhere. It fits into the dash, some Vitron badging, and we're off to the races. Let's start driving. And getting to the, the driving experience. So this is what it's all about. This is where the Audi shines. Here on the track especially, obviously uh, we're in perfect race conditions here, a bit wet. I'm not gonna do anything uh, too crazy, but um, this has the two electric motors, obviously, one in the rear, one in the front, and it has adaptive air suspension. So when you want to make things a bit stiffer, like here on the track, you obviously have that option, but if you want to switch things into more of a grand tour, more of uh, you know that GT car, which is what this is. When you want to cruise on those beautiful highways here in Victoria, you have obviously that option. And as we take this corner a bit tight, a bit tight, oh, the suspension. So fun, literally grinning ear to ear here. And even with these wet and rainy conditions, having the Quattro means that I'm planted, giving me all the confidence that I need. It's that instantaneous, lovable, always readily available torque that we want. Um, you don't need to be in the eight and a half, 9,000 RPM range. You don't need to work up a power band. It's there, it's usable, it's so nice. You know, everything kind of in this car feels nice and comfortable. And like I said, it's completely usable. You're not uh, too overbeared by all of the screens going on. And as we pull back into the end of a pit lane, so I can confidently say this is the best electric EV, like premium full-size uh, EV that I have driven to date. I love what Audi is doing uh, with sustainability, their path towards carbon neutrality uh, by 2050. They've got an entire roadmap lined out. There are currently nine vehicles on the market as of uh, 2023 that are uh, electric. And by 2026, they're looking to bring out uh, 12 electric vehicles to their fleet. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Obviously completely different link. Doggo, this one's for you. You can be hanging out uh, in the back seat uh, very soon. I'm convinced in this segment, I think uh, once again, this is still uh, the king of the hill. Okay, some real racing now. We're gonna do um, some actual stuff because um, I'm obviously not a very good race car driver. It's hot lap time. Good. <laughs> 